Hello, today we're going to demo one of the Westmoreland Intermediate Unit's eServices applications. eServices is a platform that we use for the applications that we develop in-house. Um, so you'll see I'm at the login page here now. There are a couple of options for login. We can do LDAP authentication, uh, which was what we currently use at the Intermediate Unit. Uh, we also have some other districts that have gone that route as well. Uh, or we can use just a manually created account. So you'll see a couple of the other districts that we have set up um, using LDAP. So I'm going to log in with a test administrator account. And you'll see the applications that I have access to. And today we're going to focus on the FMS app, which is our form management system. As I enter the application on the home page, there is a section for announcements so that you can communicate uh, messages to any of the other end users in your district. Um, just add some information about how to use the application or any procedures uh, that you may want to have set. Also along the top, you'll see that there are some other options here. Now, since I'm logged in as an administrator, I have the ability to create or modify form templates, which are used to create the online fillable forms. Uh, I can submit a form and send it out for a signature, or we can manage uh, the forms that are already in queue and uh, make changes to them, such as canceling a form or changing a form signer, et cetera. So, if I click on the create option, you'll see that I have the ability to set the name of the form, which is used in searching. Uh, same with the form description, if we want to give a little bit of a description about what this form is meant to be used for. And we have the ability to either upload a document, which is something that does not have any um, signature or form fields but is something that you might want to uh, upload to the form management system uh, that may be referenced by another form. For instance, we have a sign-off form to say that you have read the teacher handbook, and then we also uh, upload the teacher handbook itself as a document so that it can be referenced easily. Uh, we can allow or deny access to these forms uh, based on could be based on security groups in uh, LDAP. It could be a manual um, distinction that's made by with a group of, of manually created users. Uh, we can do it based on categories. Um, categories mainly here are used to uh, allow you to easily find forms and search for, for instance, all of the payroll forms grouped together. And then if you wish, you can set uh, a department. Uh, so if you wanted all of the human resources or IT forms to be in, in one grouping, you could do so. Up to six signers can sign a form. And this includes the person who submits the form. Um, and the options for the signers, uh, these would be either pulled from LDAP or um, list the manually created accounts. And um, since I'm in as a demo, this is just showing the demo ones that are here. We can do some of this dynamically. So if I choose user supervisor and I'm logged in as um, just a, a generic employee, then that person's supervisor would sign second. Um, we also have a, a supervisor supervisor that we use uh, in our IU that it just takes that one more uh, level deep or multiple recipients will allow me to specify at form creation who the signer should be or if we choose other we can specify somebody who's not in the list and then that will be set uh, for this until it's changed. I'll go ahead into modify an existing form so you can get a better feel for what this looks like. So we've got a couple of sample forms out here that we've uh, either used in-house or created for other districts. So um, let me pull up the report of absence. Okay, so you can see how this gets filled out. 
And the uh, form creation process is done using um, Word documents. So there are uh, just some fields that uh, you can set in the document to determine where the uh, input will be and where the, the signature fields are. We'll cover that in a later uh, video in depth. Okay, so next we'll talk about submitting a form. So if I click on submit, you'll see that some of the popular forms are are shown here throughout whatever this test district is. Um, also recently created forms will be displayed and I can either click on one of these icons to uh, and launch that form submission process or I can click down below. Um, all of this is searchable so if I were to type in pay for instance I will see uh, you know, anything that, that has um, that distinction. So here I'm seeing payroll forms, also matching on pay. If I were to type part-time in, I can narrow that down a little bit further. Um, you have the ability to mark a form as a favorite form. And if I click on that um, little star icon, the next time that I reload the page, it will make sure that that's at the top of the page for me so that I can easily access those. That's just a click away to toggle that on or off. So I'm going to go ahead and launch the part-time pay form. So when I click this icon, uh, we use Adobe's Sign API um, to generate the uh, form, and this is done uh, on the fly. And you'll see now that I have the form here that I can fill out. And one of the features of our application is the ability to automatically populate some common forms with data that we can either obtain um, from uh, LDAP or it can be manually entered, or in our case, we actually pull this from our finance system so that um, you know, I was able to grab the employee ID, uh, employee's name, in this case, just a test, the building I've been assigned to, and then my position within that organization. So this saves the end user quite a bit of time because we can fill out uh, some of the monotonous form details for them. Um, anything with an asterisk that you see here is a required field. So this form is what we use to pay our part-time employees. Uh, and um, they would just fill out the date and list the specific hours that they worked. For now, we're just going to put some, some garbage in here. Now we can validate these fields and force them to be uh, you know, adhere to certain rules. If we only wanted an email address in this field or something along those lines, we could, we could do so, but for demo purposes, I'm just allowed to key in whatever I want here. And uh, what's unique about this form is it does have uh, a little bit of it more advanced logic built into it. So when I type in the hours, you'll notice the total down below will uh, automatically be updated. So then the calculations uh, will happen in the back end here so that we now see that I've worked 35 hours, I have my pay rate set, and these fields are calculated and not editable so that the, you know, the user can't override what the, the amount that they're getting paid. Um, we also require them to initial uh, that they have read the form, Let's put some random text in there. And once they've typed it once, they can just click it again to fill out the rest of the fields. There is a comment box here, and this is a multi-line field, so I can type um, on multiple lines. And then finally, the signature. So the employee will sign off on this. And you'll notice that by default, a generic signature is generated for me. Um, I also have the ability to draw my own signature. 
which is what was typically done. So I can draw that out. Or you can click on the image option to upload an image that will then be used um, in the future to sign the document. So I'm going to go ahead and just draw my signature on there. Notice that the date is automatically appended um, to the date field. And when I click to sign, it's going to send it out to the next person in the queue. So I actually listed myself as test for supervisor. Uh, so then I'm going to receive an email now um, with a link to fill out this form. One thing that is nice about this system is that it can be used completely independent of this system. So when I receive an email, um, I can just click the link in the email to sign that form and I never have to actually log into the form management system. Okay. So if I go to manage, so we can see some stats on how many forms have been created or signed. Um, if I go to track my forms, this view is also available to all the end users. So we can take a look at the uh, forms that have been sent, what their current status is, who the signers are, and where it is in the process. If I click refresh, it will update the status of the form. So you can see here now that um, I am the one that this form is waiting on and that it's out for signature. Uh, this is also updated on a, uh, a regular basis every uh, every couple of hours this gets updated but if you if you ever want to see it uh, more current you can this allows you to easily track that form and then since I'm logged in as an administrator I can click the link and then I can go in and see this form and see where we're at in the process and I can also add comments to the form here. I can send a reminder to whoever the next signer is that they need to sign the form, or I can replace a signer if uh, someone's position has changed. If I go back to the modify forms, um, there's also a field to automate the reminders that get set. So you'll see this one does not have that option set. Normally by default, we set this to two days. So if a form is setting in the queue and has not been signed after two days, the user will, will receive another email um, you know, asking them to sign that form. And it will, they'll get an email every two days until they sign it if that option is, is chosen. Um, also under the manage section, since I'm in as an administrator, track my forms will only show forms that I, uh, as a user, have been involved in in some way. Either I have signed or I uh, still need to sign. Uh, if I look at the view all generated forms, I can see across the district any form that, that is in queue, whether I've signed it or not. And once again, this is all, all searchable. So if I search for maybe test one, I can see that this was a report of absence form that was submitted last month and it's still out for signature. So if I wanted to go in and send a reminder, I could click on the link to do so. Back to manage yet again. Um, this is where you would manage the announcements that get sent out. Um, you can manage the users um, for this district. And you can set up the security groups, department supervisors, et cetera. Some of these options may be specific to the district that, that you're, uh, whether you uh, use those features or not. This is, since it is developed in house, it's very customizable and we can adapt it to your needs. Under help, this is just uh, an area, once again, where you can uh, post uh, either videos or uh, 
just descriptions of, of how to do specific things if you want to help your end users. Uh, this uh, right now we just have a little video here that shows how to have the emails that get sent uh, get uh, sent to a particular folder so that you can easily find them later. Um, all of the forms that are, are stored um, are stored with AES encryption at rest. Once every signer has signed a form, um, everyone will receive an email that states the form is now complete and there'll be a PDF attachment to that form. And um, that file, not only is it sent via email, we also keep a record on our server, which could also be put in uh, a file server uh, share location if you wanted to have them accessible over your local network. Um, that's something that we can discuss as an option. We can upload them to an FTP server. Um, so there are some other features that, that may be of interest. Okay, I've taken a second to pause the video and load um, some of the uh, forms, uh, show you what it looks like from the uh, recipient standpoint. So this is the email that um, you know, I received from that form that I just uh, submitted earlier. And um, you'll see all that I need to do is just simply click on the link. And then the, uh, there's an authentication token that gets sent so that it knows you know, that this is myself who has signed in here. So I can go ahead and type this in and draw my signature. Let's get some scribble on here. And then I can go ahead and click to sign that form. Now I've also uh, loaded a completed form. It's a form I just happened to have submitted a few days ago to request off uh, a few days. And you'll see the completed form is here that I can print. And also attached to that is the audit trail of um, anyone that ever opened the form or even uh, viewed the form, created the form, when it was emailed. Uh, you'll see that IP addresses are, are logged. Uh, so this gives you a pretty good idea of where this form has been and, and who, um, who, who actually went in and signed it and what uh, the audit trail for that document was. So hopefully that covers um, anything about the form management system that you may have had a question about. If not, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I can be reached at jlohr at wiu.k12.pa.us. Um, email is usually the best way to uh, reach out to me. If you like, you could also give me a phone call, 724-219-2346. And I'd be happy to set up a demo for your district or we can, uh, we can do another uh, more in-depth Zoom uh, video conference session, if you like, that we can uh, address any questions or concerns that you might have. As far as the form creation process goes, um, this is something that we can do for you for a minimal fee, or you can you know, go in and, and edit them and create them uh, on your own. And we can assist with that if needed. Um, the initial purchase of the application, we do include with that the uh, ability for us to create up to five forms for you at no cost. So uh, bear that in mind.